Okay, so this weekend coming up is rookie minicamp. So all the players that the Vikings have drafted and signed as undrafted free agents, they will be participating in rookie minicamp. As far as what I'm looking forward to this weekend with rookie minicamp, not a damn thing because I mean, they're rookies. They're just, but I am excited that uh, Gary Kubiak because this was primarily this was like a 99% as far as impact players. This was a 99% uh, offensive draft. So I'm very excited for Kevin Stefanski and Gary Kubiak to immediately start working with these dudes. So very excited about that. Uh, this is realistic, Randy, mediocre best sports podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Like I said, uh, post-draft, I'm still feeling really good about this Vikings team. I was really expecting just to kind of be a little bit, mm, I don't know, I'm just going to sit back and I'm pretty much just going to watch everything just fall apart. But I think there's a lot of good reasons why you can be optimistic for your 2019 Minnesota Vikings. Before the draft, I was like, you know what, they're probably going to be an 8-8 eight and eight team. Uh, they're not going to make the playoffs, or if they do, they're more so looking at a, a wild card berth. But now... After the draft, I think they're championship contenders. Like I said, the offense was the only thing that's been holding this team back. I think they can be championship contenders. And they go from being a wild card possibility to where you can legitimately compete uh, for the division crown of the NFC North. So very exciting stuff about that. So receive some feedback as far as my, my dismissiveness. Is that a word? Dismissiveness? Whatever. Uh, me being dismissive. Of day three picks, uh, particularly after Drew Samia, Drew Samaya. I'm going to learn how to say this dude's name right at some point. But after him, so we're talking about fifth, sixth, seventh rounds and undrafted free agents. I, I'm, you know, I've got a little bit of pushback saying, well, you know, you can't be so dismissive. These are value picks and you never know. And, and you never, Stefan Diggs, he was a fifth round draft pick. And, and Adam Thielen, he was a, he was an undrafted free agent. And you're right. You are absolutely right. You are 100% correct. You know what else is correct? For every Stefan Diggs, for every one Stefan Diggs that you get in the fifth round, you've got another 3,200 Andre Allisons, all right? For every one Adam Thielen that you get in undrafted free agency, you get 10,000 Moritz Boringers, okay? So it, that's not to say that you're not going to get talent in the later rounds. I'm just saying that it's so few and far between. There's only going to be one Tom Brady that's selected with like the 199th pick in the draft or even Antonio Brown. But for the, I mean, if you're taking all of those picks and you're trading back and you're trading, and that was really the only problem I had with the Vikings draft, everything else was fine. But as far as uh, day two, was it day two? Was it day two? I think it was day two when they did all that trading back to get uh, Alex Madison. Didn't really agree with it. Uh, traded down 21 spots from 81 to 102 to get a running back. And for the most part, you just racked up on, uh, sixth and seventh round picks if you're trying to go after those needle and a haystacks that's fine but come on man like i said the last what 10 years excluding this past weekend you took 15 players in the fifth round the only two players that were worth a damn was stefan diggs and jeff Locke, the punter so anyway i'm not trying to poo poo on the vikings or anything like that i'm just trying to be realistic here is all uh next moving forward from that uh news regarding a current minnesota vikings player someone Someone who we know is going to make the team only because his roster, well, not his roster, his salary won't allow for him to be simply cut, even though he really should be. Uh, it will be completely dead money, and you can't really afford to do that. Laquan Trett, well, he's going into his fourth year, going into his fourth year, 2019, and the Vikings have officially declined Laquan Treadwell's fifth-year option. Much like Anthony Barr, I'm not going to keep ragging on this dude, Laquan Treadwell. I've said everything. At least I'm not intentionally trying to do it anyway. Uh, I've said everything I've had to say about Laquan Treadwell. I feel kind of bad for him because I do remember watching him at Ole Miss. I thought he was a pretty damn good receiver there. But at the time of the draft when we took him, I'm like, we don't need a receiver. That's not what we need. We need offensive line. Uh, and I actually watched that game, which he, I think he tore his ACL, whatever that was. And I felt really bad for him. He seems to be a, a good guy, a good kid that's really, really trying to, that's really trying hard and doing all he can to contribute to the team. But unfortunately, his talent, what he actually put on the field, is just not worth it. So the only reason he's going to make the roster is because if you cut him, it's completely dead money and you can't afford to do that. Maybe you can trade him. I don't know what trade partner, what team will take him. Uh, but you know what? Either or, this will be his last year on the team. Uh, after that, really the only other topic that I have to talk about on this Thursday's podcast is Irv Smith. Now, I talked about Irv Smith. Very excited for him. 
I actually hope that we keep Kyle Rudolph so that way we can have two tight end sets formation. That way you can see a completely, maybe a completely different offense. That's all I'm saying. I think it will be really, really cool to see um, for your Minnesota Vikings. So if they could find a way to uh, restructure or cut some of that cap money that he has, $7.6 million against the cap in 2019, if you could find a way to do that, I think keeping Kyle Rudolph would be your best option if you can do that. If you move forward from Kyle Rudolph, I'm fine with that too. But I think I would I would like to see a little bit more uh, of a two tight end set formation uh, for your Vikings offense. But anyway, Irv Smith Jr., I really like him a lot. And the only reason I'm bringing him up right now, not to repeat anything that I've already said uh, this past week and the weekend, is that Irv Smith, it's been announced, he will wear the number 84. So that I say, I have two problems. I have two two sides uh, that I want to go after right now, that I want to address. Uh, number one, the Minnesota Vikings. For God's sakes, man, you need to retire that number. And if you're not going to – I get that it's football. You don't retire numbers. If you're not going to officially retire it, then you need to basically wink, wink, retire it. As in, it's not retired, but nobody's going to wear it, okay? So you're not going to put it up in the raft, at rafters. Okay, fine. But why do you continuously do this to yourself? Why do you continuously say to yourself, you know what? Here, throw on this 84 jersey. It's crazy because for me, and actually the other side of the coin is uh, Irv Smith Jr. If I'm Irv Smith Jr. or any player for that matter, and I just get signed or I just get drafted, and I'm going to the Vikings, and all of a sudden they, the facilities manager, they throw a jersey at me. Here you go, Randy. Here's your jersey. And it's 84. I'll be like, I'll throw it right back. i be like, nah, man. Can, can I wear 87? Can I wear like 83 or something like that? Let me get another. I wouldn't want to wear that because I'm telling you, man, I'm a Vikings fan because of Randy Moss. He's the greatest receiver of all time. You really I will argue that until my last breath, until my dying days. Randy Moss is the greatest receiver of all time. If he had the quarterbacks, if he had Hall of Fame quarterbacks throughout his career like Jerry Rice did, he would have obliterated Jerry Rice numbers. That's how I truly feel. He's the reason why I'm a Vikings fan. Bro, I remember this was, what, 2000 I became a fan, so I didn't, I wasn't around for the Gary Anderson miss kick. Thank goodness for that. But when I started watching this dude in 2000, like, I wanted to be Randy Moss. I wanted to be that dude. I would practice catching one-handed uh, catches, basically flicking up the ball to where I would basically go up for those high air. And here's the thing. When I would play backyard football or flag football, like, so if anybody watched that spoof draft video that I did, I was actually not joking. Like, I really did used to play flag football when I was living in San Diego. It's, it's a lot of fun. It really, really is. Uh, what I would do is, if you loft the ball to me, so if you, like, throw it up in the air to where it's either a jump ball or it's, like, a little bit, like, where you can kind of stretch your arms out for it, I'm going to catch it. But I'm being very honest. I'm giving you guys a 100% uh, honest scouting report. If you dart it towards me like Cam Newton or Brett Favre, like right in the chest, I'm Laquan Treadwell. We'll just go boom, boom, and then fall right there. Like, I'm terrible. But if you loft it up to me for a jump ball, I'll, I'll, I'll out jump just about anybody, but that's what it is. I wanted to be Randy Moss. All the catches that he made, he was incredible as a player. I just don't think that there's anybody else like him, and the fact that you got guys like Cordero Patterson or what was the other guy? Was, was it Bucky Hodges? Whenever you have these players that come out of nowhere, he's the reason, Randy Moss, you got these legion of fans. He impacted the league. He changed the NFL. His name, his last name is still used as a verb where you're talking about making – incredible acrobatic catches especially when you have defenses draped all over you you got moss i'm about to moss you his name is still used in that fashion that's how incredible he was because he was making crazy ass catches like that all the time this dude i'm telling you man i bumped into celebrities before i bumped into pro athletes before uh richard Sher sherman i bumped into him uh i swear i swear i bumped into jerry allen out in San Francisco at Pier 41 before I couldn't. He had that cowboy hat on, so his, it was covering up his eyes a little bit. And he had those cowboy jeans on and that flannel shirt. I was like, I know that's Jared Allen, but I'm not going to go out of my way to be like, hey, God, Jared Allen, big fan. Can you sign my. I don't know. I didn't have a jersey at the time. Can you, sign, can you sign my knuckles real quick? I don't know. But I bumped into Mariano Rivera. I bumped into guys before. But if I bumped into Randy Moss, I would be like, I, that's the one dude where I'd be like, oh, dude, come on, man. Come on, man. Show me a little love. Show me something. Actually, not to get too far off topic, I also bumped into Matt Khalil one time. This is 100% a 
a true story. Years ago, this was at TCF Bank Stadium. They played the Jets. My wife and I, we went out there to watch that game. That was when Jarius Wright ended the game on like an 83 or 87. I think it was like an 87-yard uh, catch and run off a screen pass by Teddy Bridgewater. It was so, super exciting, whatever. We went to Benny Hanna's. We went to Benny Hanna's. I don't know if it was. I think it was after that game. Maybe it was that uh, Monday. Couldn't remember. But anyway, went to Benny Hanna's at Mall of America. So we were sitting there, and I'm, you know, they have it's a hibachi restaurant, so they're frying up stuff. You're surrounded by a bunch of people that you don't know, so you're just talking, whatever. They're like, "Oh, what are you doing out here? Are you traveling?" I'm like, yeah, you know, I love the Vikings, and you know, I do a podcast, and I talk about them, blah blah blah. And uh, you know, somehow one thing led to another, where I ended up talking about Matt Khalil, and I'm like, I can't stand Matt Khalil, not the person, but like just the player. Like I think he completely stinks. And then all of a sudden, lo and behold, this one guy that was sitting next to me, he said, "Oh, for real? That's how you." feel about Matt Khalil I was like yeah that's how I feel about him. he's like oh well actually coincidentally Matt Khalil is in this restaurant right now I should go over to him and tell him what you've been saying and in which case I was like really he's here and the second response I had was well go ahead and tell him it's not like he hasn't heard any of this stuff before uh so I was like you know let me I, don't, I think this dude's joking let me go see so I went around there like a little fake lap like I was getting ready to go to the bathroom and I looked over because I'm not gonna bother anybody and be like oh my goodness like, you're Matt Khalil, you stink. Like, he's out having a good time, whatever. But lo and behold, it was Matt Khalil. So I also technically bumped into Matt Khalil, too. But if I bumped into Randy Moss, that would be the guy where I'm like, yo, I'm a big fan. You're the reason why I'm doing this podcast. You're the reason why I'm even following this damn team in the first place. I love this team because of you. What Randy Moss did for the Vikings and what he did for the league was incredible, man. Randy Moss was so great that... He was a basketball player. He was a really good basketball player. And you could see it in the way that he would catch receptions or that he would catch passes. Because I'm telling you right now, the way that he caught passes, he wasn't just getting receptions. He was grabbing rebounds like a basketball player. So the dude was incredible. You should retire this man's number. It's a shame that you have all these dudes. Irv Smith, I think he's going to be a great player. I think he's going to be really good. Choose a different number, dog. I, I get it. The Vikings, they're dumb enough to give out the number 84. Here, throw this on. Like, Come on, man. So when I see other random dudes wearing 84, they're running around the field. I'm like, mm, that doesn't sit well with me. I don't know, man. So anyway, he's going to wear 84, I guess, unless he comes to his uh, senses and be like, you know, I probably shouldn't wear this. But to this day, I haven't heard of one player that's been offered it since then and turned it down. They're like, yeah, I'll put it on 84. So that's the only problem I have with it. But anyway, we do this uh, three times a week. Uh, rookie mini camp will be this weekend. Uh, like I said, I'm happy to see that Gary Kubiak and Kevin Stefanski will be working with these players. You can catch me on Twitter at realistic underscore Randy at Facebook or Facebook at realistic Randy. Saturday, my podcast, just search realistic Randy on YouTube.